Killer Instinct story, uh, for you guys that want any information on this, this is a documentary made by Hold Back to Block. If you want to watch it, if you want to support him, um, he's got a Patreon for FGC documentaries, and he's made a ton of them in the past. These people are doing amazing work. Uh, Esteban, who made this, has, has done editing for me in the past. No shit, he's the one that edited all the gameplay portions for the Injustice 2 Assist Me. If you guys happen to watch that, he helped, he helped me out a ton during that. Let's get this thing started. Uh, I've been looking forward to watching this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna audio balance a bit. And, uh, I think I should stick my ass up here, most likely. I think that might be a good idea. For the past few months, I've traveled around the country to talk to the developers behind Killer Instinct, as well as the community that calls it home, to learn about how and why a game like KI holds a special place in so many hearts. And our story starts with a dream and some rare talent. I've seen this place before. And I get this call late in the afternoon, which means it's like two o'clock in the morning at Rare. You gotta hear this. I mean, that's literally the call. You gotta hear this. And they put it down. <laughs> you know that new sound you've been looking for? Listen to this. What <laughs> ya? It's Jayco doing the what ya? It's a kick it. <laughs> we should call it Killer Instinct. And I'm just like, uh, yes, but there's no way we're going to be allowed to call it that. And he's like, this is oh, Nintendo. I would like the name. Okay. <laughs> so, and then my next. Then you got to realize how much of a precedent that is. Like at the time with Nintendo, Howard Lincoln and his sort of culture that he was building around Nintendo in the nineties was super PC, like Disney levels of even more than what was going on right now. So the, the fact that like NOA specifically was okay with them calling it Killer Instinct and having Nintendo as a logo on there, they were like very family friendly, like even more so than kind of what Nintendo even is now. Killer Instinct, believe it or not, was my first competitive. Ignore everything this guy says, never believe a word that comes out of his mouth. Fighting game. It was the first fighting game that I got in my hands and I was like, I want to be really good at this. SGI is very, very high end graphics at the time. These are the same machines that was used to render Jurassic Park. Yeah, these machines that Kevin Bayless, who I'm gonna, sorry, I'm in, 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 injecting. Kevin Bayless was the original designer at Rare. And he was the guy that essentially made all the renders for KI and the character models, right? He also made Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, like all of the classic Rare look that you know about Rare, from Killer Instinct to Donkey Kong to everything, came from these SGI machines. But these machines were insanely expensive. They had such little documentation of how to get them to work, but Kevin was able just to, he just worked on it forever. He just kept making stuff and eventually just came, came to the point where he was making these renders look really good. So much so that what Nintendo was pumping out and what Rare was pumping out in terms of their visuals to associate with their games was better looking than any game ever at, in, in the mid-90s. Like, this is 1994. Nothing looked like it, and it's because so few people actually knew how to use these machines, and they were so expensive. They wanted to make the machine loud, that you could hear it. But they wanted to do it in such a way, and you could say it was kind of sneaky, that the loudest things by a lot weren't gonna get heard on day one. Combo breaker, ultra combo. Those should be louder. The call outs of combos should actually get louder. Oh, because people don't know how to do... Chat, you have to remember this is arcades. There's no documentation and there's no internet. So nobody knows how to do things until people eventually are mashing the shit out of the buttons on the, on the arcade sticks in an arcade. Just shit just eventually happens. And then all of a sudden combo breakers happen. And then suddenly, ultra combos happen. So by day one, nothing, you, no, the game doesn't even seem that special. And they're, get, they're able to get away with these audio, the, these audio cheats that they're essentially putting into Killer Instinct because I have one of these cabinets. I actually have an original KI cabinet. I cannot make the volume go all the way up. I've only gone to 50%. If I, if I made the volume go all the way up, I would break fucking windows. This thing. I've only gone to about here. I've only, on, on my, on my KI cap, I've gone to about here and I'm like, this is so fucking loud. This is so loud right now. And it goes up to here. Okay, that's as loud as it should be. Not knowing that as soon as somebody, ultra combo, that it was going to be loud. It would take close to a decade before signs of a killer instinct return would start to emerge. 
I made a YouTube video about this. I remember the day this happened, chat. I remember reading these articles and the day this happened in September of 2012 and just losing my mind. I invited Kenny and Steve over like the same week and we just played Killer Instinct 1 and 2 together on like an emulator or something because it was the only way to play it. Yeah, it was, it was, I couldn't believe what was happening. If, but we didn't know if it meant anything or not at the time. I, I've heard this wonderful expression of Killer Instinct 1 being the best solo player fighting game ever because it was super fun and abusable and yeah, playing multiplayer, you could kind of get in a situation, especially with characters like Cinder, where you're like, ah, I kind of just die, <laughs> right? Actually, I completely agree with that. I think Killer Instinct 1 is my favorite fighting games ever, but playing people, like actually fighting somebody else in KI1, kind of sucks. Like, and that's what he means. Like, Killer Instinct is actually a really fun game with a lot of interesting stuff per character, but when you actually play it, it doesn't make any sense, like, random hits do more damage than combos. The things that are really fun in the game don't technically, like, work well when you're fighting somebody else because you just end up doing unbreakable combos and shit. KI1's really good, and it was actually the first fighting game I played competitively, no joke. But I will completely agree with retrospect that, no, no, KI, KI1 is the probably the best single-player fighting game in terms of just its core mechanics and messing around with it. We came down to basically when you're designing characters, there's always like three key reads that you try to make sure are always uniquely identifiable components of that character. And especially when you're dealing with the characters that's existed before, you want to make sure that there's ties back to right. those things. That was so cool, like, because I was, I was going down to Double Helix on my own money. They were three hours away from where we lived in LA traffic. And I was going down there like, two to three times a week. To my absolute luck, I was invited, you know, initially, but I cared so much about KI and where they were going with this and was like, well, this game is so much fun. Like, I, I absolutely, like, I'm super into it. They pretty much had me come down and play test characters on the fly. Like, I, I, I remember being one of the first people to ever see Thunder and they had like this big reveal thing and they just like wanted to see my reaction. It was so cool. Everyone loved KI so much, like, and I was, I was going down to this place, like, what was so far away, but I was driving to, like, essentially video game heaven, you know? Like, they were making Killer Instinct on one side of the building, and on the other side of the building, I was talking to Tony, who was the, the director on Strider. And then I got hired from Capcom to make the Strider documentary. I made one of these, technically, for Strider back in 2013, chat. On the other side of the building, Killer Instinct was being made, so I was... Hanging out with the Strider guys and trying out Strider before it was out. Couldn't believe, I couldn't believe, like, what we were, like, once, once we saw Thunder and everything, like, and we, once they showed me Counter Breakers for the first time, I was just losing my mind. Couldn't believe it. And for Fulgore, it came down to... <gasps> oh my god, chat! The design of Fulgore! Oh, the... God! Uh, the, the design of Fulgore is a big one. I remember talking to the art director a whole bunch about Fulgore because he was going to be the last character added throughout the season. And they had a lot of very District 9 uh, looking Fulgore robot designs. And it was it was it was much less what the Fulgore eventually came out and looked like. And I, I remember specifically the, the dude that was the art designer and Mike Willette bringing me into this conversation about Fulgore. Before he was like, they before he was actually chosen. This was like maybe around August or something, right? And this was this was when we were first talking about doing trailers. So we started talking about uh, the Fulgore design. I'm not working for these guys, right? I'm not getting paid. I'm just this kid that is like, Fulgore is my number one character in the game, and they identify that. Oh, Max actually likes Ki. See what he has to say about these Fulgore designs, kid, right? Well, maybe not so much kid. I f <laughs> I felt like a kid. Sorry. So he let me in on the conversation with the art director where they had a lot of designs and they're like, let's let Max pick his like few ones. And the one that they eventually did go with was the, the one that they used. Uh, I, I always felt Fulgore was kind of like a jet engine with legs. And that's pretty much exactly what they went with. The, 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 the design that Fulgore eventually had where it looks just enough like the old design, but still like modernized and sleek and cool. Like he looks like a, he looks like a fighter jet with actual legs. I'm so... They went with the best Fulgore design they had, because some of the other ones were very out there. They were the very super robot -y in many ways. You start to see, like, all the elements that's actually hanging on them and everything. Like, there's all sorts of details that kind of... I remember after making... Sorry if I'm interrupting. After making this trailer for Spinal. Yeah. Uh, th this, this, is, this is my trailer. After making the Spinal trailer, I remember constantly getting the feedback 
from from everyone at like Double Helix, if not Microsoft. Yeah, let's let's do another trailer and let's make it as good as that Spinal trailer. I'm like, okay, I'm like Spinal is a very unique character because his background's incredible. He visually is the best looking character in Ki, and his music is revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> his music is played with a human bone. You had a I had, I had so much fun on Spinal's trailer, but the, the thing is, is that they're like, hey, let's just do one of those trailers like Spinal's trailer. I'm like, Ugh, okay, all right. They get locked out and then they get opened up to huge damage. And we're like, you're a genius. <laughs> this sounds great. <laughs> this is absolutely a fantastic idea. Dude, I, the, the, the day that they had me over, it was like late at night, right? And they, they had shown me Thunder for the first time. And I just got to mess around with Thunder and it was like, he looks incredibly cool, like ridiculously cool. I got to see Thunder stage and they're like, we want to show you something else. So they brought me over to this other this other machine, um, this other this other workstation. And they're like, we got a new mechanic we want to throw in the game. Uh, and, I'll, I'll work, and they're like, we want to we want to have you try it before we describe it. It was like eight o'clock and everyone was still there at eight o'clock. Right. So they're trying to get my gut reaction on this just in a core gameplay mechanic. And they're like, try to combo break and break the heavies. So I already know what heavies are like and I could break them. Bam! Break the heavies. And they're like, okay, well now we're gonna try to break your heavies. So they break my heavy. I'm like, okay. They're like, this time, press the medium punch and medium kick button while you're doing a combo. I'm like, what, what? Like, what, at any point in the combo, they're like, when you do the heavy specifically, like, you already know how to break heavies, right? We know how to break heavies. So now press the medium kick and me medium medium punch button. So I did it and the character like stopped and did something. I'm like, wait a minute, I can I can stop my combo? What's that good for? They're like, break it again. Character went up, did the pose, and then caught the move and counterbreaker! It was Mike's voice in the in the background. Go, 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 counterbreaker! And then they just continued to wail on me for the next like five seconds. And I looked at the damage, and the damage was like 50 to 60%. I was like, holy shit. Wait a minute, if you know that somebody's going to break, if you're that much in somebody's head, you get like insane damage, they're like, you got it. I was, I, like, I, I can I even put myself in that moment. I was like, oh my god, this game is crazy. This game is crazy. This game is going to be insane. Like, you're just, you're just building, like, th this is, this is hype incarnate. Like, you're just creating this game to make things insanely hype. I don't, I, I, what, what? When we were talking about music to Jed, who was our sound engineer. Jed was such a cool dude. He is, he's the guy that we were all talking with him. We were like, is that like a TIE fighter? When, <laughs> is that like a TIE fighter sound effect? When Spinal hits you with his skulls? And he's like, maybe. <laughs> there was like, he's like, it's, it sounds similar, huh? He had this accent. Super cool, dude. Him, him and Mick just, they, they, they redid the sound mixes when I did the trailers. So they gave everything like way more impact and way more like, they do this when you have a trailer. They don't keep the in-game audio for everything. They, you essentially submit a trailer with a bass core audio. I turn off all the sound effects of the music and like all the ambient sound that's in KI. And uh, I give them just a raw hit audio of what the physical hits and the character voices are or actually keep the character voices out because they add that stuff in. When the, when the trailer mix, the audio mix comes in from Jed and Mick, they essentially have this really cool, crisp ass sounding track for the trailers. Um, and yeah, those are these guys who did this. Like, when I, when I was first making trailers in KI, they, the camera was so wonky. Like, all, all what was his name? He built me the tool to make trailers. Chris Sabaggio, that's his name. He was such a nice guy. Like he, he, got, he got wind that I was making the trailers and I was like trying my ass off to try to get these angles and shots and pan shots and depth of field and focus and all this stuff. I'm trying to do this on like an Xbox 360 controller, right? There were moments where I called in Jessica. I'm like, JJ, I need you to hit the L button because all my other hands are over here pressing these buttons and I need to get a tracking shot of Fulgore or a tracking shot of this stuff. And then Chris at one point, he's like, when I come in to, to grab capture for um, either Sadira or Orchid or something, he's like, I made something for you. And in just his spare time, he, nobody asked him to do this. He just got hold of, I did it. He created an interface 
on the controller for an Xbox 360 controller that allowed me to pan, zoom, slow pan, use the analog stick in accordance to camera movement so that it didn't just go fast or really fast. They just did this stuff just to check on graphical issues, so they didn't have this. But yeah, exactly, Mike. Uh, and he just made me a tool that allowed me to make these trailers actually like, I did it all on a fucking controller, but I had control, right? I was able to move the camera around, like actually panning and capturing shot. They know that this rollback can happen so that we can make conscious decisions of what can happen when a rollback happens at a specific point. Uh, it was it was another day I was down there for for trailer stuff and Tom or Tony, I'm not I, I think it was I think it was Tony. I always get it's tough to get a mix up because they are twins. Um, but the the dudes that were responsible for GGPO were suddenly at Double Helix's offices. And I didn't know the reason they were that wasn't gonna pry or anything, but immediately in the back of my head, I'm like are they gonna try to put rollback into KI? And I and that was the, always the thing that I was the most worried about with Killer Instinct was everything requires such precision and timing that if this game doesn't have frame precision, it's gonna really fall apart in an online environment. And as soon as I saw that, oh, the the cannons in some way are involved, that's interesting. I, I actually got a lot of hope. I wanted to be able to try and build a fighting community that didn't shrink each time a new version came out. It grew, you know. And that's an absolute good observation. Like, usually when fighting games continue in many ways, the community shrinks, right? Too many changes happen, too many new characters, and it keeps getting more and more expensive. So that's that's still a thing that Killer Instinct started the seasonal model, right? It began seasons of characters. The, the, the games that were before this, what, what were the biggest games before this that actually had updates? The last one was technically Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And then Marvel 3 got updated to Ultimate Marvel 3. But outside of that, Injustice and and Tech and Tag, they were just adding like characters on characters. They're just, here's a new character, you can buy them. Here's a new character, you can buy them. To eventually do like the seasonal model, this game was the first game to technically do it. Also, yeah, Street Fighter 4 at the time too, to USF 4. It's the same thing. February 2014, it was announced that Double Helix would be purchased by Amazon, leaving the future of KI. Question. I was so sad, dude. I remember having conversations with the guys at uh, at Double Helix when this happened, and uh, they were devastated. Uh, they were devastated that right at the end of the first season, they were essentially done. But I, I think what they were what they were secretly hoping, from what I gathered, was that they were hoping that Microsoft was going to potentially buy them out because Microsoft was going out and picking up you know devs left and right, uh, not as much as they are now, but. They definitely were in the market for that stuff back in, you know, 2013, 2014. So I think a big hope was that, man, my, Microsoft should just buy Double Helix, but they didn't end up doing that. And I, I think I think the reason is, here's what, here's what boils down a lot of Killer Instinct and why many things were the way they were, why the time constraints were the way they were, why the game uh, was made on, obviously, like, it's, it's not like a huge, giant AAA fighting game. It doesn't, it doesn't have the pedigree of other Microsoft titles. Um, is because it's an Xbox Live Arcade game. It's it's an XBLA title. It has XBLA title uh, effective budgets. It, it has XBLA title effective marketing. So would Microsoft higher up than XBLA be interested in potentially acquiring a studio just for an XBLA title? Probably not, because now XBLA is gone. <laughs> That's ultimately the thing that I have to say a lot to people. Like, why don't I think Killer Instinct is coming back? Why do I advocate, you know, to create awareness of KI to let the people at Microsoft know that you have a huge fan base that is passionate and loves this and for for a game system that's trying to get fans back on their side right now uh Killer Instinct is one they should pay attention to because it's always been an XBLA game and since XBLA division is essentially gone now it's hard to imagine Killer Instinct coming back until somebody pays attention like somebody out there Focusing and paying attention that Killer Instinct comes back. I think it's, I mean, I, I'm I'm saying theoretically here, and I'm not. I wasn't I wasn't involved with any of this stuff, but I think it's one of the reasons why like Killer Instinct stopped development back in uh back in 2017. It was yeah, it was kind of hectic. <laughs> Fortunately, Microsoft. It was it was insane. It was things were coming in so hot and crazy. I remember there being a conversation at one point. Someone made the observation and I was doing it during a trailer as I was trying to highlight moves. I'm like, TJ Combo doesn't have his knee. Like his knee attack. Everyone's like, what? Like, yeah, his knee attack isn't here. Like he's got a jumping, his jumping light kick looks like a knee attack, but 
He doesn't actually have his like back forward, back forward, like kick move. It's just not here. They like in the same day, I swear, had it ready for the trailer. Like concepted it, put it in, got it going. Like where, where TJ does like, he essentially has tiger knee. He's always had it. Why does TJ Combo have a tiger knee? I don't know, but he's always had it in Killer Instinct 1 and 2. So they did it. They, they just, well, we have to do it. Like they're like, yeah, TJ Combo has to have his knee attack. We have to do it. A lot of people said, I'm not going to play this game because you guys patch it too often and it updates too much. I'll come play when it's done. It's done. <laughs> come play. It was an interesting conversation I had with Keats recently how uh, we were talking about something that was in development for a new character. Something that they, they designed a, uh, something that they, they designed specifically to be shadow countered. And, uh, early in development, we were, we were fighting each other, uh, with this new character, but before they were out, we were shadow countering it like left and right, like just whooping its ass. When the, when the game eventually came out or the character eventually came out, nobody was shadow countering it. It's like, it's, it's weird. And he's, people still don't do it, right? Like they, they like shadow counter as a mechanic fulfills so many issues that balance might might have in Killer Instinct. Adam was like, remember that like that we were we were playing these matches together and we thought everyone was gonna shadow counter this? He's like, nobody still does. It's 2020 and like people still don't shadow counter this thing. It's it's like it's like a clear weakness. But that's the thing about KI is that KI is a game where you have to make so many choices so fast and so frequently that sometimes you just are like, you're trying to gather your bearings instead of going for the thing that might be an obvious weakness. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the crazy part about KI's balance and what eventually, what eventually it became to be. Good. So if you, any of you guys want to check out uh, this documentary, if you want to watch it on YouTube in full, you can. For anyone that wants to check it out, uh, this is called uh, Fight On, The Killer Instinct Story. This is a fucking fighting game, chat, right? In in every sense of the word, in, in, in terms of mechanical depth, in terms of character variety, in terms of over-the-top visuals, incredible music, and possibly the, the best individual fighting game community that I've ever, ever had the luxury of being a part of, much less being like a pinnacle of. It's a fucking fighting game. When you ask, like, what makes fighting games special, like what makes fighting games unique in comparison to other competitive games? What makes them bring people together in a way that sometimes some other games that are even bigger don't, where the passion comes from? You just watch this documentary and you get it.